core networking, and network troubleshooting. In this nugget, we're going to talk about how to configure the network on a Mac computer, um, setting up TCP IP, working with DNS settings, and all the different settings. We'll even look at the advanced stuff, uh, including some stuff you, you may never use, but at least if you need to do it, you'll know where it is. We'll also look at the network troubleshooting tools that are built into the Mac, both the graphical tools and the command line tools, sort of the, the under the hood tools that you may need to get to if you're doing some really, really hardcore network troubleshooting. Core networking and network troubleshooting. Now, when you sit down at your Mac desktop uh, and you're just kind of staring at it here, the only thing that immediately comes to mind for network uh, visually is this little radar symbol, uh, and that runs any built-in wireless that you've got going on. So you can connect to a, a wireless network that way. You can also shut the airport, the wireless, off completely. Uh, and so uh, from there, gee, what do we do? Well. There was a thing on here, Open Network Preferences. This is going to bring up the System Preferences application to the Network section. And this is where the majority of your network configuration is done. Now, on the left-hand side here, you've got every different way that this Mac knows how to connect to a network. Um, airport, which is wireless. Um, Ethernet, which in this case is not connected, as is uh, Bluetooth and this uh, other uh, wide area network modem. All of these work basically the same way. Um, slightly different features over here, but you'll notice in this case the cable is unplugged, so there's there's no Ethernet. You can tell it how to configure. Um, let's not configure it with DHCP anymore. Let's configure it manually. This would allow us to type in an IP address and a subnet mask. Uh, provide the address of our router, our DNS server, and so forth. So you can configure all these things uh, pretty much the same way you can on any computer. Uh, and each different type of connection can have a different configuration. Uh, going back up to the airport, you'll notice that it's it's defaulting to this particular network. And uh, we're not because it's wireless, it's automatically going to configure with DHCP. So let's try this advanced tab. Now, this advanced tab, although it appears on every single network connection's little page, um, it is different for each network connection. You'll notice that I'm configuring the advanced features for the airport here. Really, really important. So these features are going to differ depending on the type of connection. In this case, I can set up the names of my preferred networks and my preferences for connecting to them. Um, here's where I can change whether or not the airport, the wireless connection, uses DHCP. Uh, it currently is. I can renew the lease. You'll notice that there's no way to release the DHCP lease. Um, it can be a little tricky for troubleshooting, so if you need to release it, make th the current DHCP address go away completely, and then renew it, what you would do is change this to a manual address, and then change it back to DHCP, and that will force it to renew the lease right then. Uh, on the DNS tab, we're just entering our DNS servers. Um, believe it or not, even though the Windows world is trying to get rid of WINS, the Windows Internet Name Service, um, Apple's support it. So if you have WINS servers on your network, you can define those here. And uh, here's a, a huge misconception. People think uh, today that Mac computers, Apple computers, all need to use this Apple Talk protocol. Uh, and in fact, Macs haven't used Apple Talk by default for about, I'm going to say, seven or eight years. It's a really old network protocol, and it's designed for very small work groups. Um, it's a pretty chatty protocol, so it, it's not very efficient. Uh, and a lot of people like to turn it off, but in fact, it's not on by default in most cases. So if you need to make it active to work with an old Apple Talk zone, you can do so, um, but you don't need to. There's no reason to turn it on unless you specifically need it. You do not need Apple Talk to talk to a laser printer or to a Windows-based network or anything else. There's just no reason to have it in most, most modern environments. Um, Macs use TCP IP just like everybody else. Now, if your network is using 802.1x security, uh, here's where you would configure that security. You can set up your proxy servers for various services, um, a web proxy, SOX proxy, FTP proxy, whatever else. Uh, and we can just configure some basic Ethernet stuff here. Um, if we set this to manually, you can see that nothing really changes on the page because this is a, an airport connection. Um, not a lot of, of stuff we need to mess with. You know, manually configuring this MTU is, is ultimately not going to get you anywhere. Um, I, I really recommend just leaving it all on automatic. 
So that's the airport. Let's go look at some of the advanced options for the Ethernet connection. Because they're slightly different. You'll notice I don't have the airport tab. Uh, but the TCP IP, DNS, WINS, um, Apple Talk, still there, still inactive by default, 802.1x, proxies, and Ethernet are all different. Um, being able to configure these on a per connection basis is nice. Um, maybe if someone's in the office, they're going to be using an Ethernet connection and they need proxy servers set up. When they're not in the office, they'll be using their airport connection and maybe they're not going to use any proxy servers. Uh, so that's kind of a, a neat way to be able to configure all these things differently. Um, notice that we're also telling it uh, when the built-in operating system FTP features are running, they're going to use passive FTP mode, so you can configure that here too. Uh, a, lot of, not, a lot of neat stuff that is typically going to be left alone, but if you need to get in there, well, it's kind of important that you be able to. The other thing is this location automatic. Uh, we can edit locations. So let's create a new location so we can see what goes on here. We're going to create a new location called uh, Home. So by telling it we're at home, it's going to say, okay, uh, when I'm at home, I'm only going to have Bluetooth and airport. And we might say, no, 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 when you're also at home, uh, I'm going to add another type of connection, and we're going to use um, a VPN connection at home. So I'll set up a VPN there. So you can create these different locations, and kind of based on, on what network connection is in use, as well as you coming in here and selecting your location, um, then you'll be able to have it set up a whole different set of network connections that are appropriate for that location. So I'm going to take this home location out so I don't totally mess up my networking forever. And uh, that's basically the majority of the configuration that you need to play with on this page. This little gear drop down box um, lets you duplicate one of these. These are called services, these different connections. Um, you can make one inactive. You can set the service order. Um, this is probably the only other really important one to play with. If it's possible that someone's going to be connected via multiple means, if they're going to have their airport on and be connected by Ethernet, then I might want to set the service order so that the Ethernet takes priority. So that if the Ethernet is running, there we go, then if the Ethernet is running and the airport is running, then the Ethernet will be the one that the computer uses. Um, I like to leave airport at the top. And when I don't plan on using the airport, I just turn it off. Um, it saves a little battery power that way too with the airport turned off. You can uh, import and export this configuration information. Importing a configuration um, gives an administrator a way to sort of uh, bring a prepackaged configuration into the machine. And uh, let's take a look at managing virtual interfaces. It's not going to be much on there right now. Uh, we'll add ones. Um, this is where you can add virtual local area networks and link aggregates. Um, this is kind of one of those things that if you need to do it, then you've already got all the right settings from all the other computers that are doing it. Um, if you've never done it before and it's not running on your network, then it's, it's useless to even be in here. Um, but that's where you would go set up something like a, a VLAN or a link aggregate or something like that. So those are the basic network configuration stuff. Like most computers, Macs default to the simplest possible. Um, everything defaults to DHCP. So if you've got a network that's running DHCP, then by and large, you just plug the Mac in or let it connect via wireless, uh, and it'll just work. Uh, when you select a wireless network from, well, from right here, if you've got this open, or if you select it from the menu bar drop-down, uh, it'll ask you for the password then. It'll give you the uh, option to remember the network, and if you remember the network, that makes it show up here. Uh, and it will connect to your preferred or remembered networks in the order they're listed. So it's going to try this one, and then this one, and then this one. Um, and oh gosh, that's about it. Setting up the network's pretty easy. The, the, the big thing is, is when something goes wrong, uh, what do we do to troubleshoot it and fix it? So let's, uh, let's close that out, and now let's talk about some of the, the tools that Apple gives you to help troubleshoot network problems. Like most of the utilities, uh, you're going to find these in the Utilities folder. And let's just sort of scroll through, and you can kind of see some of what's available to you here. Um, the big one is probably this network utility when we're doing networking. The system profiler, we'll pop that open real quick because there's a couple of decent pieces of information uh, related to hardware. So it'll tell you the, the firmware version of your airport card, um, information about your firewall. This is allowing all incoming connections, uh, network locations, any modems that are attached, any network volumes that it can see, 
uh, and so forth. Any, any different hardware that you have that's related to the network will show up here. You can see on this top level one, showing me all the different connections, the type of connection, the hardware it's using. Uh, so clicking on this one shows me the configuration. So this is kind of a neat way to quickly review configuration, find out version numbers, firmware, stuff like that. Uh, the majority of your, your troubleshooting is going to happen on this network utility. And this is a great little utility. I, I really wish Windows had something like it. When you open it up, uh, it lets you choose the network interface you want to play with. So we're looking at our, our main Ethernet, uh, our main connection here. It's using the wireless network adapter, um, giving me my hardware address, MAC address, uh, its current IP address, the link speed. I can watch packets going in and out of the network there. And if I want to use a tool like Netstat, then it's right here on this tab. So I want to display routing table information. Click Netstat. It's going to run Netstat and go collect the routing table information. And then the output will be displayed down here. What's actually going on is Apple, uh, this utility, this network utility, is running the Netstat command line utility from the Unix shell in the background and just capturing the information into this window. So this is kind of a way to use these low-level utilities without having to open a command line interface. Um, if you happen to be using Apple Talk for some weird reason, uh, you can play with its tool here on this tab. Uh, ping is fun. Let's try pinging google.com. And we can see that it correctly resolved the address, and it is pinging google.com. And we're having it send only 10 pings. So once that's finished, sending the 10 pings, uh, we can go review our results and we can see the, the aggregate statistics and everything else. So really simple way to do pinging from this kind of little network utility. Um, and a lot of that is the same way. You've got lookup, um, trace route. Let's do a trace route to google.com so we can see it run. And again, it's just running the same trace route utility under the hood. Um, so you get that same output if you've ever run tra trace route from a command line before. You get that same output that you're used to seeing. Who is finger? Uh, all sorts of stuff, and port scan. Port scan is pretty cool. Um, we could ping google.com, and we'll only test ports between, we'll keep this kind of short, maybe 80 and 82. Uh, so port 80, HTTP is open on google.com, not surprising, since it's a web server. Uh, and it's still running, so I'm guessing that we're going to see ports 81 and 82 not open. Uh, but this is just a really handy utility to kind of have laying around uh, to be able to get too quickly, to be able to do all sorts of, of really basic low-level network testing. Now we're going to let this finish because I want you to see what happens when it, it can't actually find the open port. Um, well, maybe. Gosh, it takes it a long time to decide that the port's not open. Yeah, okay. I don't have anything approaching that kind of attention span. So port scan completed, I was able to stop it right in the middle, which is nice too. If you uh, accidentally uh, leave that unchecked, it's going to try every single port. That's port 1 through port 6, 65,335 or 353. Um, so 65,000 ports, basically, uh, if you don't check the checkbox. So uh, I always check the checkbox. Nobody wants to sit around waiting for all that to happen. This is not a port scan tool that you're going to run against a whole series of IP addresses to do a security check to see if ports are open. Um, this is more of a way of, you know, hey, I'm, I'm having trouble getting to uh, this intranet web server that we're using. So why don't I, I do a port scan from here and see if port 80 is actually open from this computer or not. Um, more of a troubleshooting tool than a security scanning tool. And so that's the network utility. Now, is that the only thing you've got to, to, to deal with network troubleshooting on the Mac? No, of course not. So one thing you have to keep in mind is that uh, Unix is the original TCP IP operating system. That's the operating system um, that was around when TCP IP was being developed. And so all the cool troubleshooting tools for TCP IP were really invented in the Unix world. And uh, uh, Mac OS X is nothing more than Unix. It's actually the, the Berkeley software distribution, or BSD version of Unix, uh, modified and built up and changed with this graphical user environment sort of strapped on top of it. So if we get under the hood a little bit, and that's what our terminal window is all about, uh, then we can use a lot of those built-in powerful Unix troubleshooting utilities. Now we're going to talk about the terminal window more in nugget number 11. But for right now, let's just do some playing. Um, we can see that I can get down and ping google.com. That works. This will run forever, so uh, I'm just going to hit Control-C to interrupt it. So it tells me the aggregate statistics at that point. 
um, we can run commands like trace route. You'll notice that some of the command names are a little bit different than on Windows, um, but that's just something that you kind of have to get used to. Uh, pick up a good book on using Unix, um, specifically the Bash shell. You'll find a lot of good books from O'Reilly on using Bash, uh, and you'll get all these command names. So this is, is tracing its way to google.com. I'm just going to interrupt it here. Uh, so we've got all those same utilities that you might be used to using on Windows here. Now, there are Windows-specific things. For example, if I type ipconfig like I would on a Windows box, uh, that's going to work a little bit differently. You know, you're, you're, it's, it's telling me that, okay, the command is one of wait all get if add. I don't even know what these means. Let's try running ipconfig get option and see if that looks like the Windows output. No, it doesn't. So the idea is that while some commands may exist, um, they may work drastically different than they did under Windows, uh, and some commands might not be there at all. Uh, for example, in Windows, to work with the NetBIOS stack, we would run nbtstat, and you see here that nbtstat doesn't exist uh, because it's a Windows-specific utility. So it doesn't hurt to, to try running a command like that, though, to see if it's there. And uh, your basic commands, ping, uh, traceroute, NS lookup, those are all there. If I run NS lookup, I'm in NS lookup, and I can say, give me a lookup for google.com, and it will go out and do it. And when I'm finished, I can type exit. When I'm ready to close out this terminal window, exit, and come up here to the terminal menu, and quit terminal. The vast majority of the network troubleshooting utilities that you're going to need to use on a regular basis are wrapped up into this network utilities uh, graphical user interface. Um, in fact, that one I just did, lookup, that's NS lookup. Uh, so I could do google.com and hit lookup, and it's going to get that same information that it just pulled up. So the idea behind this utility is it's giving you those command line tools without the need to remember the syntax, um, but it's still giving you the full output. It's not really hiding anything from you. So if, if you need to use some of these, I often find this is the easiest way to get to those. I, I don't have to manage the different Windows and Unix syntaxes in my mind. Uh, this kind of graphical utility is going to do it for me. But if you do need to get down to a really low level and play with the tools directly, then the terminal window is the way to get there and do that. In this nugget, we looked at how to configure the network on a Mac computer. Uh, we looked at configuring a wireless network, a wired network, some of the advanced options, how to manually set a, a TCP IP address, how to use DHCP, where to turn Apple Talk on and off, how to configure 802.1x, everything. And we also looked at some of the troubleshooting tools. We looked at that graphical uh, system profiler, which kind of tells you what the current condition is, uh, gives you access to things like firmware numbers and so forth for uh, your embedded networking uh, hardware, as well as the graphical network utility, which is just kind of a GUI wrapper around some of the command line tools that are present in the terminal window, uh, which is just a Unix bash shell or, or a Unix shell uh, of the Mac operating system. So if you need to ping or trace route or do an NS lookup or uh, uh, even do a, a very simple straightforward port scan, you now know where to go to do all of that. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.